Hey warriors and welcome to the Townsfolk Show. Today we have some interesting news. Coco's Milch started the VTuber purge. Oh, finally, it took him long enough. Truly, truly, we have a lot of drama and some amazing claps. Without any further ado, grab yourself whatever potion fits your needs and let's begin. The first clip that we have today is coming from Meletrice. Link of her channel will be in the description down below and it's the clip in which Coco's Milch, the famous Albion Ryan streamer, is seen betraying his friends. I mean, there is to the expected wizard, no? Why did you expect this? Because he's German. They're angry humans. Oh, come on, Hat, stop with the stereotypes. It's not a stereotype, wizard. I'm just saying, why does it take a dozen Germans to change a light down? I don't know, I thought they're pretty effective people. Why would it take a dozen of them? Because they say many Hans make light work. <sighs> Such a bad one. Just watch the clip. And in three, two, one, boom. Hey, wizard, just watch the right side. The Vito there is dead. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Hat, wanna see an octopus? No, thank you. I've seen what the internet does with those. Oh, come on, just, just watch this beautiful clip. Look at this. It's a clip from Gorgeous Paul. Again, link for everybody's channel will be in the description down below. So make sure to check them out so that you can see those moments happen live. And I'm going to shut up because look at that. Boom. Melted. That was gorgeous. And by the way, Sam bro, is he back adventurous? Is he back? Massive shout out to Sam bro and Gorgeous Paul of course. But I'm super surprised to see Sam bro. I haven't seen him in a long, long, long time. It was that or that way. Shut up, man. Sam bro is a nice guy. He's playing axes. Super good, uh, super good player. So I strongly suggest you check him out as well. Shout out to both of them. Hat, I do not know what to say about this. So I'm just gonna show it to you. I want you to look at his inventory. Look at his silver. And just watch. I don't even know what to say about it. How did you even get that many silver bags? Well, you know what? It's something that I never possessed. Patience. Do you think he ever showers? Uh, no, none of us do. None of us do. It's super satisfying to watch, though. That's why I wanted to show you this. It's just wild. 100 something million silver in silver bags. I, I actually want to know how long that took. I'm super surprised about that and curious at the same time. Adventurers, for this one, I'm gonna ask you to not blink. Oh, that's easy, Thorny. That's why I said adventurous. Just watch this. It's a clip from Jack Fia, who, by the way, has the same focused face that I do. I'm glad I'm not the only one, man, because my wife makes so much fun of me when uh, when it comes to this. Because whenever I'm focused, I stay like this. I started correcting that in the, you know, last period of time, but I used to stay like this. Like, neck basically eliminated and mouth open. <laughs> Sometimes she even catches me when I'm watching a video on my phone, I'm like... <laughs> so I totally relate. I'm glad I'm not the only one who has that focused face. So yeah, watch this. <laughs> okay, in case you missed it, watch it again. I'm gonna make myself invisible so that you can see Jack's reaction. <laughs> it's surprising. <laughs> Keeper K procced. Full stacks. S just like that. Just like that. Wizard, there is faster than you in bed. Hat, what? It's true. Now, with all those clips out of the way, we're moving to the next segment. And that is, what are the townsfolk saying? The segment in which we jump on the reddits of Albion Online. The most toxic trace of them all. In which we're trying to find different topics worth talking about. This week at night, a prominent figure in the Albion Online scene has gotten himself into some pretty deep controversy upon making a post on Discord. Uh, as far as I understand, this is the Discord of their guild. And they were essentially planning what to do in the first five days of early start. We're talking about the five days that you get from buying a founder back and somebody just exposed him by essentially making this post on reddit now as you can see this is a 
pretty big post right here and it's sweatiness and it's the dearest thorn it really is sad it really is and it's the reason i don't really want to play with guilds but you know that not all the guilds are the same right i do realize that Ed. but upon reading one of those posts and seeing how much drama surrounds guilds in general and so on and so forth i just don't really want to align myself with it you know it's just way too much drama way too much sweat in the normal everyday guild now again not all the guilds are like that for example the guild that we're going to be making on the European server. Shameless plug! Truly shameless plug. We're going to be making a guild over there. A lot of people have asked me for this. That's going to be 100% sweat free and 100% drama free. We're just going to be a bunch of players playing the game. So stay tuned for that as more information will come the closer we get to the European server launch. Now let's talk about the post itself. There are some aspects that stand out. Mostly the idea that essentially what Wicked Knight is doing is asking players to invest all of their time farming mists, uh, doing castles, getting as much silver as possible even through swiping to deposit that in the guild itself now again this is not something mandatory but the idea is that you make silver you deposit the silver in the guild the guild keeps buying plots using the guild bank which is managed by the guild logistics team and you get profits from taxes and plot sales based on your contribution to the guild pool now so far there's nothing too sketchy over here but the reason people got incredibly mad was this right here and it's the reason i removed my camera so that you can see it this is the third option that wicked knight delivered when it came to how you can make silver so that you can deposit it in the guild swipe and deposit in the guild to invest in plots a 100 dollar gold pack early will give you 20k gold which is like 10 to 15 million early day one this is the equivalent of 10 plus hours of farming as a solo player so if you have lots of money then you can escape the grind fast although i would recommend grinding as half the fun of this game is in the grind now seemingly this post might make you very very mad but you have to understand something adventurers there's nothing wrong with this yes it's sweaty yes you totally get a neck dear if you read the whole thing yes but this is something that's not against the TOS. It's not against the TOS to ask players to swipe even and give you silver to invest it for them. Albion Online banks have been doing this for ages. I think you need pronounced scans. Fair point. But what I'm trying to say with this is that uh, there's nothing wrong for a person to try to convince you to give them silver. As long as there's no RMT involved, like you're not buying silver from an illicit source and you're buying it from SBI with gold, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with uh, a certain company trying to convince you to pay $10,000 for a water bottle. The problem is if you actually fall for this. Because honesty adventurer, unless you want to compete for the Darwin Awards, I would advise against trusting such proposals and actually try to set yourself up with either closer friends that you know you can rely on or simply by yourself you're gonna be much better off in the long run or again if you decide to trust this well let us know how it goes but please do not ask for silver in our chat later on and the last topic that we have today are some corrupted dungeon questions oh do they still trade corrupted dungeons i was surprised to learn about that as well hat new player here i just started and i only know about corrupted dungeons and i have some questions my condolences Truly. Is ratting corrupted dungeons a good way of making silver right now? Only if we're talking about Slayer. And for Slayer you need 100k infamy which I would suggest you get through actually PvPing. Because otherwise you're gonna have to spend a lot of time PvEing to slowly increase your infamy and by the time you get to the point in which it becomes worth it, like you can finally do Slayers, you're gonna feel so burnt out. So I would recommend you start actually PvPing maybe at least in hunter corrupt dungeons then slowly progressing into stalkers and once you reach 100k infamy and you're comfortable with a build you can simply just go over there and uh, well yes it would be worth it to rat slayers but only slayers and if so yes should i focus on another profession like leather gathering etc so i have money to buy items because i know i might lose my gear while doing corrupted dungeons well here's the thing adventurer and here's something that unfortunately the game does not really teach you right away what a flash tank yeah i'm sorry for the flashbang over there i just needed to open up paint the idea is this if you want to pvp you might be very tempted at the start of the game to actually do some gathering let's say so that you can get some money so that you can invest this money into pvping now this might seem very good on paper because yeah you don't have money you need to farm uh, gather pve do whatever it takes to get yourself some money so that you can invest this money into pvp this is something that has been said in the game since i started playing and it couldn't be further away from the truth especially right now now i want to make myself clear you do need money to pvp but you also do have to understand that the game offers you a lot of different options to make said money if your goal is pvp let's say I'm, i don't think it's the goal of um 
this person right here but i think it's a goal of a lot of people so i'm just using it for an example if your goal is pvp what you can actually do is go into non-lethal pvp content let's say your goal is i don't know you watched equat 1vx with carving so then you want to do the same thing perfect go in the non-lethal mists Go into non-lethal faction warfare. Go into even non-lethal corrupted dungeons. Maybe your goal is to PvP with a friend. You've watched Ninusk do some small scale in the roads. Awesome! Get yourself a friend and go do non-lethal corrupted dungeons. Get yourself... Maybe you don't have friends right now, uh, because you are, after all, an Albion player. Then get yourself into the arena and practice it over there. And once you get the hang of it, once you understand what you need to do, once you start synergizing with your friend, or maybe you want to be solo, once you start understanding what are your weaknesses, weaknesses and your strengths and once you build your actual build because initially you're not going to know how to build your build then you get yourself into little content but i want you to understand what i've done over here instead of asking you to go gather so that then you can get some money so that then you pvp i'm asking you to do non little content which means that you're never gonna die which means that you're never gonna lose your set which means that you can only get money you're not gonna lose any money and with the money that you get slowly but surely you make yourself comfortable by actually progressing into the real deal pvp now again most lethal things present in the game also have a non-lethal counterpart zvz's they have faction warfare gvg's they have the arena and the hellgates 1vx's they have the Mists. The mists are a very, very good option for that. Or faction warfare solo flagged. There's a lot of different non-lethal things that you should try before you get yourself in the lethal things. Is making money in hunter corrupted dungeons until I get enough money to buy gear again before going to red zone corrupted dungeons viable? Or should I just focus on different professions like I asked? Well, I've already answered this question. Absolutely, that's the way to go. If you're into corrupted dungeons, start with the non-lethal ones, make yourself comfortable, and then progress into the lethal ones. And when it comes to the last question, how can I get to know the game generally better, like any YouTube? recommendations i'm gonna let you guys to answer that question right there of course it's not done just watch not done pretty much this concludes our today's show i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did make sure to check out this one right here as it's just as good of an episode and i think you're gonna laugh just as much so why don't you check it out thank you so much for paying me a visit until next time we meet each other i wish you safe rounds